Take two. Um, <laughs> just dropped the camera. Right, let's try this again. Uh, so we have a 19 plate Vauxhall Vivaro. It's got the 1.6 by turbo. Now, we had codes on the dashboard for a uh, DPF below efficiency. So it was a P0, no, sorry, P2002 DPF below efficiency. Now, I did a, I put carbon cleaner on it and did a forced regeneration and did a little bit of research and discovered that these have a little bit of an issue um, with, so the DPF is actually down the back here underneath the turbo. They're a bit of a, bit hard work to get to to be honest with you um but there is a steel pipe i can probably squeeze you guys in i don't know whether i'll be able to see what you can see or whether you'll see it but we'll try shaky cam right in there you see that stainless steel pipe in the middle of your screen that goes down to the back of the dpf because the dpf's on the back of the engine down here now that pipe comes up to here um, and then there is this little rubber piece on it with a nice spring clip one end to make it nice and easy and a stupid clip the other end that you can't get to. Uh, it's a little bit frustrating to get out. The, the actual sensor itself is held onto this bracket here. Enhance, he says. Now I can't even see it in the camera. Right. So that sensor is held on to that bracket there. There. That is held on there, and then that pipe links to this pipe here. And this little tab goes underneath. I found the easiest way that was sat on there that way around and enhanced. Um, and I found the easiest way to get this off was actually to put my fingers on this side and just push these out either side and wiggle it out that way. Um, I took the sensor off because I know I've seen some people that have had problems with the end of this sensor here melting. Um, and the sensor just going generally bad. Uh, now the problem that I actually had was the blocked tube. So the tube is bolted onto the DPF. But it's a bit of a nightmare to get to because it is right in the middle of the engine bay. And to get to it from underneath, you need to take the subframe off. Which isn't too bad a job on these, but I thought, well, I need to try to find another way of clearing that pipe. So the first thing I did was I took a random arrangement of things. So I took this hose and I put that onto the pipe. Uh, and then what I did was I put this straw type thing which is off of a syringe, and then wedged this funnel in the end. And then what I did was I put that down there, and then I put some of the older, uh, a bit of used Wins DPF cleaner in it. Just poured it in up to the top um, and let it sit for a while. Now, to diagnose it, what I actually did was I took my Mitivac, I just connected mine to the... Uh, pipe with this um i mean it was actually really technically it was with a different bit first um and yeah i could pull a vacuum on it or put pressure on it on the the mitty vac here i could actually put pressure on it or pull a vacuum on it so the pipe was clearly blocked so like i say i, I put some uh, winds dpf cleaner in it and let it sit I used a DPF cleaner just because if it goes into the DPF, it doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt anything, and it won't hurt the SCR either because um, this has got a selective catalyst reduction system on it as well, or add blue to everybody else. Um, I left that for a little while, and then what I did was I just started the engine up, um, which it started up okay. I did originally as well try poking a bit of welding wire down it, but it wouldn't. It wasn't going. It wasn't working. Um, so then I thought, well, okay, so what can I try instead? Um, so I left it to soak for a little bit while I had a little think. And this is what I came up with. 
And I'm even going to throw it in the toll, throw it in the uh, the old toll box of my uh, head for next time. So it's a piece of welding wire, as you can see. Now what I did was I doubled, so I cut off a bit of welding wire out of the MIG welder, bent it over, and sort of crimped the end so that it was quite compact here. As you can see, crimped it over. That then runs, and then I basically crimped it over, and then this end. I put a bit of electrical tape around it just to bulk the end out and then I took the center out of a yellow uh, crimp terminal slipped so I put some uh, tape on it bent the two ends I left a little bit of sticking out the end and then bent the two ends over as well put this crimp on crimped it and then put it in the end of the drill and use the drill to crush the crimp. Then all I did was gently stuck that in the end of the pipe and just gently spun the drill, not too fast, just spun the drill and then just slowly fed it in and out until it went all the way through. And we now have a clear pipe. So that pipe is now clear. So now I can put it all back together, clear the fault codes and hopefully the problem is now solved and we won't have a DPF below efficiency problem. Um, it is a common problem on these, um, so it's worth keeping in your in your knowledge book there that, I mean, this one's only got uh, 50,000 on it, I think. So, you know, it's it's not got many miles for, for what it is, um, for it to already be blocked. It was, so we've cleaned it out. Obviously, we'll keep that in the knowledge bank for the next one because I've actually got quite a few of these at the taxi office. Um, so we'll keep that in the knowledge bank for for next time. Obviously, we know the DPF's clean because we've done a, a forced regen and we've also done a carbon clean on it. We now know that that pipe's clean. I might just run it through with a drill one more time before I put it all back together. Uh, put it back together and then send it on its way and see what happens. Uh, I could even plug the scan tool in and just look at some live data and see if we do have a pressure sensor working. Um, I did see on the data pits that the uh, pressure sensor didn't work, but to be honest, I've experienced that on the launch tablet many times where they say sensors don't work and they're not reading any pressure. Sometimes they're just not equipped with a sensor. Um, so you, you do have to be careful of that. Obviously, this one has got the sensor, and it was blocked. So, we will get this uh, put back together. Um, in fact, actually, let's just start it and see if we get any gas flow out of there while we're, while we're here. So, I mean, as you can see, we really haven't got very many miles on it. You can see we've got the engine management light on now. Oh yeah. Don't know if that hissing is coming across on camera. Yeah, no, we've got, we've got good flow out there now, so we've definitely got flow. We now know that that pipe is clear. Um, I did actually start it up once before um, when I had the winds uh, cleaner in here. I did start it up, and I was getting. I wasn't getting it didn't blow it out I just got very slow tiny little bubbles through there oh somebody's at the door right there we go sensor is now located back there the pipe and everything's all back on so it now has an exhaust pressure sensor um, just for I think I'm not 100% certain because I haven't looked up the, the theory and the operation but I think the reason it throws a DPF problem I think is because it uses the fact that there is a temperature a pressure sensor and the DPF pressure sensor to work out whether the pressure it's seeing in the DPF is DPF pressure or just engine pressure because it's obviously got uh, exhaust flaps and everything as well for closing the exhaust system and everything so let's see I doubt it will, but let's see if it will clear itself.
No, looks like we're going to have to do it for it. So we'll get the. Surface functions. No, actually, let's just go the easy way. And so, what we're going to do? For some reason, it reads this vehicle. I don't know why. As a Vauxhall Mocker. Uh, so. Uh, as we can see there, uh, this is see, that tells us there we've got a quick access, we've got different dates all down there. If you're thinking about getting one of these Lord tablets, not bad. So let's get this on its way. me so the only question we've got now is is that sensor any good or is the sensor itself failed as well because it is possible that the sensor might have failed but the only way the way we can find out although saying that the temperature sensor the pressure sensor shouldn't have failed because if it failed uh, well, you would expect that we would have had a code for the exhaust pressure sensor. There we go, ECM one fault code. Ignore the rest of it. Yes, it's a taxi. It's a Vauxhall. I don't think the one six CDTIs are any much better than anything else. No, no, we have ECM oil life exceeded. Okay, so we have uh, engine oil life exceeded. Okay, so interesting. Right, so we are just going to check because this code for the oil life could be because we've obviously done, we've had a problem with the DPF. Oh yeah, that looks like that's very high. Um, now, when you do DPF regenerations, it raises the oil level inside the engine. And it's possible. What's happened is we've actually exceeded the oil life by uh, the engine running. And what it's done is uh, nice and clean. And what it's done is it's put a lot of soot into the engine oil because the engine keeps trying to do forced regenerations forced regenerations will push up the oil level so we might just drop the oil out and replace the oil okay so we're actually get you in the light we're actually slightly low on engine oil Or it may just be that the engine oil has, um, or it needs to be topped up, so we need to put some in it. But we'll get some put in, that oil doesn't look that bad, we'll get some put in and I will check the service history to see when it last had a service and maybe it actually just needs the uh, service light resetting because if the service light uh, decides that it's been enough days then it could actually just be the service reset that needs doing because we service these early anyway um but i'll check the history sort the oil out and uh then we'll get it on the road again but thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one